Welcome, my friends, to another edition of Rugged Outdoors Guide here on YouTube. Guys, today I'm going to do something that I'm really excited about. I hope you guys are too, because it's something that nobody else shows you how to do on YouTube or on Google. Uh, you probably know already just by reading the title, and that is how to make your own bent shaft canoe paddle. I made this one a few years ago. This is not bent shaft. It's just a canoe I put together with some Home Depot pine, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do something that looks very similar to this paddle right here, um, but it's going to be bent shaft. You'd, you'd think somebody would show you how to do that on YouTube. It's not. If you go to YouTube, you'll find all kinds of stuff about, you know, which is better, straight shaft or bent shaft, or the theory behind a bent shaft, or how to paddle with a bent shaft, but not how to make one from scratch. Like, how do you get the bend in the shaft? Do you bend a piece of solid wood? How do you do that? I mean, you can, there are ways, but seriously, how do you make it? It's kind of like the big secret. If you go to various companies like uh, Gray Owl Canoe uh, Paddle Company or Bending Branches, they don't actually tell you how to bend the branches. They don't tell you, they just promote their paddles, which are actually very good paddles. I, I wish I had one, but they don't actually tell you how to make it, which makes sense, right? They want to sell you them. Uh, I am not here to sell you paddles. I'm here to show you how to make one. Let's get at it right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is get a two by 10 board. Um, it's probably going to be 60 to 70 inches long or so, and you're going to want to find the angle of your uh, bent shaft. Uh, I used about an 11 to 12 degree angle, and you can use a, a fancy little tool like I've got here, or you can use like a protractor, whatever you need. And this this tool is going to be, or this uh, board is going to be your shaft shaper or your press, right? So. Um, whatever you use to find your angle, do it and make sure that there's enough wood on both sides of your cut. So you're going to uh, just rip it down the center and then somewhere in there you're going to find that angle and this whole thing is going to be clamped together eventually. All right, so uh, I also wanted to find the shape of my paddle and so I thought the best way to do it would be to just get a large piece of paper and I came up with a couple of designs and I finally settled on one of them that I will use as my template. And the best thing here to do is to just fold it in half and make a sort of a half half template so that when you open it you get a perfectly symmetrical blade shape. And so um, that's kind of what I did here as a bit of an experiment. Uh, my shape looks pretty traditional. Uh, for a bent shaft paddle. Then I got a piece of 2x4 and uh, you're looking at about uh, five and a half feet there is all you need but the total of what you need might be about 10 to 12 feet. So on the end of the five and a half foot piece I did uh, f uh, six measurements of a quarter inch and this is going to be your shaft and of course we're cutting these thin slices or thin strips because they will bend. They won't bend 90 degrees, but they will bend enough to fulfill that uh, 12 degree um, angle that we talked about earlier. So, so once you get those measured off, you're going to rip through those on your table saw, and eventually you'll come up with uh, exactly what you need to make your your uh, shaft. So you can set your measurement on your table saw so that. Um, you know, it's pretty much at a quarter inch. I would say don't go any thinner than that, but you don't want to go thicker. So you can, you know, use your guide on your um, table saw or you can just measure any other way you want. So get your quarter inch. Once you get that done, you'll want to get everything ready to clamp together. And uh, in order to do that, you'll probably want to lay down some plastic or paper on your work area and then start rolling or squeezing glue on your strips of ripped 2x4. Uh, the Gorilla Glue I used is a great glue. The only thing is it's a little bit thin and runny so that when I clamped everything together I didn't get enough glue squeezing out. So I wasn't sure if it was glued really well but it, it was. So you want to work quickly once you got the glue on and get everything all straight and lined up and then stick it in your press and as quickly as you can, you'll want to clamp everything together. 
and the, it bends as you'll see quite nicely at that 12 degree shallow angle. I don't know how much I could push that further than the 12 degrees, but um, I don't want it any more than that. So I think we're we're good with that that angle. I use three clamps on mine, but probably a few more wouldn't hurt depending on the condition of your press and, and the board that you use. If it's thinner, if it's not a two by 10, if it's a two by eight or something, you know, more clamps might be better. So while you're waiting for your uh, shaft to dry, I would cut the blade pieces. So I just, uh, I use some uh, stain to see if, if if the stain would sink in and, and you know see how far it would it was it was pointless <laughs> I ended up shaving it all off and it was just a white paddle blade um, I made sure I had enough wood and it would cover the area of my template and then I started gluing everything together you just want to make sure your whole surface all your surface is covered with glue you could probably just squeeze it together and it'll do it anyway but you know I just kind of did it the old manual finger spreading way and I used a couple of strips right there is one of them of hardwood of uh, black walnut which I also used at the tip of my paddle as a tip guard so you don't have to do that all you can you just have you can just use the pieces from your 2x4 that I mentioned uh, all you need to, needed to buy is a 2x4 about 12 feet long 10 to 12 feet long my shaft is not done yet of course it's still drying so I used a mock shaft in there a little piece about the size of my shaft and uh, glued everything together keep in mind you're just gluing together the outside pieces right now obviously you're not gluing everything together because you don't have your shaft ready yet it's still drying so you're just making two of the outside pieces so this is day two now the shaft is dried overnight and uh, it's ready to continue. Now what, you're, what we're doing now is we are shaving the edges of the shaft because it's not perfectly smooth because of the whole process of gluing. So, but you want them perfectly smooth. So once that's done, now you're ready to glue the, end, the uh, two blade pieces together. You want to make sure everything is clean. Um, and very flat because this is crucial now when you glue these together this is where you're gonna have lots of pressure on uh, every stroke that you take on the water so I, I use these two little pieces of, of uh, wood as lifters because I wanted my two blade sides the sides of my blade to be about at the middle of my shaft and they're not as as deep as my shaft or as, as wide and so I needed to lift them up a bit if that makes sense hope it does uh, it'll help for the shaping process to have everything sitting symmetrically before uh, we start shaping so now once that's set you want to clamp everything together and um, uh, probably about as tight as you can without warping anything um, this is kind of one of the one of the more crucial gluing processes they all are crucial but anyway uh, clamped it together as best I could with my three clamps and um, you can kind of see the end how it looks there see how the bottom is raised a bit so that it's sort of centered on that uh, the shaft then I started cutting my grip pieces they're just one and a half by one and a half inch pieces that I, I did I cut an angle there as you can see to help with the shaping process and then there's my uh, uh, piece for my fingers it's going to be an asymmetrical grip because you're only using one side of the paddle so I wanted to make it really comfortable so I'm shaping another piece that goes sort of on top for my fingers and um, that's just part of the process there I'm gonna use my uh, table saw to do some not finesse cutting but just getting rid of some wood that I otherwise would have to sand down and uh, so you can see the shape that I'm looking for there so I just uh, I'm just kind of showing you here on the on the saw without actually doing it. I just did it after the fact here, but that's how I I pushed it through. Just I uh, use this the blade on an angle just to kind of get rid of some wood that I just would otherwise waste my time sanding. So I'm clamping it all together. As you can see, the the finger piece there is ready to be clamped. You can see I've shaped it just a little bit with my. Um, sander my uh, belt sander and you can see on the back the 
a little bit of a messy pencil mark. That's kind of where I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the wood on the outside of that to continue uh, shaping for comfort of my fingers. So there's the pattern of the blade that I lay, I'm laying on now to the dried um, blade pieces. And you can see I have my tip piece on there as well. And uh, now you want to just use some sort of marker or pencil or something that you can see just to give you your outline, which you're going to now cut out. I wasn't thrilled with my jigsaw. It did, you know, it was okay, but it, uh, it caused me some issues. And so I actually had to um, end up using a table saw, you'll see in a second. But So you want to cut out the shape as best you can, and then you'll, uh, you know, plane away as much as you could. That planer was pretty good, but it was not ideal. Uh, it's it's kind of big and I couldn't shape it very well around the bend and so I again I did a lot of sanding you'll see that coming up soon so there's me cutting uh, using the table saw to to hack off some some of the chunks that I couldn't get really well with the jigsaw I use the router just to get rid of more wood than I need. I'm not doing it in any sort of finishing way at all. This is just so that the edges don't hurt my hands, the sharp corners, so that I can work on the paddle from this point on. Plus, it's wood that I would have to get rid of anyway in the sanding process, and so the less that I have to sand, the better. If I can get rid of it with another tool quicker and easier than sanding, then that's what I'm doing. So in this case, I actually uh, messed around a little bit with my handle now, which is dry. You can tell we're flying through time here. This is day two. And um, I kind of cut around the edges, again, to get rid of wood that I would normally get rid of through the sanding process. So I've kind of got things on a roll here. I've got the angles cut out of the, the blade and I've got the handle ready to be uh, shaped better. And um, so it's a very clunky, awkward tool at this moment. So here you can see I just flipped my belt sander upside down and went like crazy. I used the heaviest grit I could find and uh, whatever that is to you in your area, just go for the heaviest you can find. It. Um, it, it did the job well, but it was sometimes hard to keep the, the sander, you know, sitting in its place there with just a, a clamp. It was kind of awkward. But anyway, it did the job. If I could do this over again, I would definitely use a hand, like an angle grinder with a shaping disc. And then I would clamp my paddle in uh, a vice grip and be able to shape it that way. But I didn't want to go buy any more tools than I already had. And so... I did a whole lot more sanding than a lot of people might if you had your shaping disc uh, and a grinder. So I did have to do some manual shaping uh, around the handle with uh, just a, a sanding block with heavy grit, just like on my belt sander. But I did get the blade finished. You can see it's pretty thin and everything looks uh, like it's pretty much ready to go with that. The handle, the, the grip was a bit harder to do uh, because I had to do it with manually and so I couldn't finish sand it very well with uh, like a palm sander which I did with the blade there you can see. I did shape the the handle to be slightly oval for comfort you can't really see it there but I did and you can see the asymmetrical design of the grip itself really really happy with that really comfortable most comfortable paddle that I own and I own about uh, well more than a dozen so it's pretty much ready to be varnished with a marine spar varnish. We used five coats of that. And uh, your only challenge really is to just make sure there's no dripping and sagging in the varnish as it's drying. But even if there is a little bit of it, it certainly doesn't affect the performance. All right, gang, so here we are at the end of our journey to making a paddle. Here it is, here's the finished version. Um, this took me about four days, but that's only because most of that time was spent waiting for glues and varnishes to dry. As far as working hours, you're looking at probably no more than about five or six hours, which would include um, cutting, gluing, um, shaping, sanding, varnishing, that kind of thing. So guys, 
Um, this, th if I could do anything differently on this particular paddle, all I would do is probably make the blade a tiny bit narrower. This is a bit wide for me, but that's just a personal thing. Uh, there's no, no real problem. I'd probably make it about a half an inch narrower. Um, uh, side to side, but whatever. Um, really happy with the uh, asymmetrical grip on there, uh, which makes sense when you're only paddling one way, right? With a bent shaft like this. All right, guys, if you found this helpful, I really hope you have. Uh, maybe you'll find some other really helpful stuff on our YouTube channel and on our blog at ruggedoutdoorsguide.com. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. And until then, enjoy God's creation, guys. Keep on looking up.